All right, now that we got the guy's camera set up, let's go and move into getting this guy to be able to aim down the sights. Uh, more than likely, this is going to be broken up into two different videos. One will probably go over setting up the initial uh, event script inside of the character's blueprint, and the other will be inside of his animation graph, getting him to be able to, I guess, his spine to look up and down. Um, so, another thing real quick before I move into this, we'll I'll give credit where credit's due. Uh, one of the projects I've been looking at a lot that's been teaching me quite a bit um, in terms of networking was uh, using the generic shooter sample project. I've been using this uh, last couple days and it's actually taught me quite a bit in terms of giving me examples to look at. You can find that on the marketplace. It's out there. I thought it was definitely well worth it. Um, as well as if we do, we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, networking stuff when we set up the guy's aiming system. And um, there's two ways you can find this. You can first go into the search up here in the corner and we can type in uh, networking. And with that search, it should come up with, I thought it was gonna give me it up here, but it, it brings up on our browser, it'll load up uh, the documentation on different uh, search results. but. I'll bring it up anyways. If you can find this the introduction to Blueprint Networking, I'll have this link in the uh, description box as well. Go through these videos, it'll give you a really good rundown on uh, just how networking works in Unreal. Uh, very basic setup in Blueprints. It's a uh, great little radio done by uh, Brian Brommer from Epic. Uh, if you need to find the additional videos, you can go to Epic's YouTube channel. They have tons of resources there. So let's get in, let's get the sky aiming. So uh, first thing I know I need to do is I need to go into his event graph and I need to set up my controls. Um, I tried doing this video earlier, it didn't succeed, but uh, where you need to set up the controls for when we mouse click and we use the controller's thumbstick is we'll go to the settings and we'll jump on down to our project settings. We can come down to the input, input page and we'll jump into action mappings. Here we would want to add another action mapping and we would call it say aim down sights or for us we're going to be calling this ADS quite a bit. Uh, I assign the buttons to the right mouse, right mouse button and the gamepad right trigger. Uh, once we have that set up we'll jump back over to his event graph and let's type in aim down sights. Now we have our aim down sights uh, accessible. Um, for all the stuff I do event tick wise, I put everything up here at the very top. So if I ever have a frame rate drop uh, in gameplay, I know where to find what issues might have been occurring in case of event ticks or something else been running in the background. So first thing we'll need to do is we need to be able to set up a system that first of all has to run through a server as being the primary. So one person is hosting the game from his side and he has people joining in on his game using his bandwidth and they are uh, going to be sending messages to him to be able to send out of things that they can do. So we need to set up a couple of functions to be able to handle this. Uh, first function we're going to add is we need to be able to toggle when we click and when we unclick our aiming system. So let's call this toggle ADS aim down sights. Let's add another function when we start aiming. And one more function for when we stop aiming. And now that we have those in place, let's set these guys up in a category for handling out weapons. So you can click on the um, function and on the details panel, let's get rid of the search we can actually add a category. Um, there is no category here for weapons, so we'll make one by clicking and just dragging over. And let's add in weapons. Now that the weapons is in there, if we go to the start and stop, a new category has been added, we can add those right in. And this is to, get, to stay help us stay organized. And we can collapse these down if we need to, since now we have access to them in our tabs for editing. So first thing that needs to happen when we press or release this is we need to toggle our aiming down sights. So let's bring in our function and let's plug in both our pressed and released. 
and we need to be able to set up a bool because basically we were saying yes you're aiming or no we're not aiming so let's add in a variable let's add this be a bool and let's call this bool player is ads which aim down sights um let's do a question mark so we know that it's more unique and that we named it basically it is asking a question so uh, we'll go into toggle and then when we click or release our aiming button we need to do we need to f have a flip-flop system basically in here um, so let's bring in our variable let's get it and let's hold down B to make a if statement and let's connect those so what this is doing is if we compile this our bool is set to false so when we enter this we need to ask is the player aiming down the sights if true then we don't is the player aiming down the sights if false is true then stop aiming if not then we need to start aiming so let's bring start let's connect that and let's bring in our stop let's connect this as well so now we need to say, okay, now that we're aiming, we need to be able to do do something when we enter in here. So first thing that needs to happen when we enter into our starting, the beginning to aim, we need to find out who is the server and who is the client. If it's a server, we need to find out who has authority. So switch has authority. If it's a server, the server needs to automatically be told, yes, we can set this true, that we are now aiming down the sites. If not, the client has to do something, but the client needs to talk to the server to be able to pass this information on. So for this, in order to handle that, we need to be able to create two custom events that are gonna be able to allow the client to talk to the server and to pass these events to tell the server, hey, I need to do something, so can you do this for me? I'm letting you know I need to do this, can I do it? So we can right click and we'll add custom event. In this custom event, let's do server start aim down sites and let's make one more custom event of you guessed it server stop ads and from there we are going to need to toggle something so if we're it we need to start we need to start aiming down the sites because now we've passed this information on through uh, to the server so let's connect our stop really quickly and now in order to get our, so when we start, the remote's going to ask, hey server, I need to do something. Um, so it'll come back to the event graph, it'll pass through here, and we need to make sure that our custom event nodes, these red ones here, are set to run on server, is reliable, and we can call this in the editor so we can test it within the game engine editor itself. Once it, the server says, hey, the client's doing something, go ahead and go to start, go to remote, and then now the, if, now the client will now have authority to be able to set the bool to true that they're aiming. So if they're entering the first time, let's do server start ADS, and we'll connect that to, st to set, and then let's go back to stop, oh, not stop yet. We need this. Let's go ahead and cop. I'm sorry. Let's just copy this variable here for setting our ADS. And let's bring it over to stop. So again, it's going to be the same situation. Let's paste that in. It's going to first ask for when you're stopping, who has authority? So it has authority. If it has authority, it'll then set the bool to false. If it does not, then the client needs to ask the server that hey I need to stop aiming down the sites so it'll go back to the event graph it'll say the server needs to stop aiming down the client needs to stop aiming down the sites pass it along to the server the server will recognize it'll go back into stop and now that the client has authority because it's being passed to the server to set this bool to false 
so now that we have that in place, let's go back to our event graph and let's organize this up a little bit more. So now that the toggle ADS has passed through these events, we need to set up a branch to handle the flip-flopping situation for our cameras to be able to adjust, adjust the camera boom, adjust field of view, and then eventually rotating the character. So player's ADS, let's connect that. And for this uh, bull to be read on multiplayer, it has to be able to be what's called replicated. So if we come down to replication, we can do replicated. And now this variable should be able to be read between clients and servers. So now that it's being read, what do we want to do? We need to take our camera and we want to get it up closer to the character. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to grab the camera boom. And we need to set the target arm length to, some, to something shorter. If we want to know what it's called to set the target arm length, we can look over here on the details panel. We can find the target arm length, and if we drag off this, this set up the getting node, and we type in set target arm length, we can actually manually set the length to be something else. So let's call it down to like 60 cents. That's pretty close. Let's copy this and let's set it back down to what its default value, it, value is, which is 100. So if we're not aiming, then it'll actually lengthen up the camera boom again and we should be back to normal again. So if this works, when we go back into the game and we play it, our camera should now be up close to the character. And then that's, it's working, cool. The next thing we gotta do is we want our character to be able to rotate or move, look in the direction that we're actually aiming with. Right now, it's just zooming in. That's all it's doing. There's a few things that we got to do. We need to have this passed along to the client and the server. So let's add in some code inside our start and stop ADS. Uh, we write one. We're basically just going to copy it. So let's add on after the set, since this needs to be replicated onto the clients as well. So first thing we need to do is we need to find out where is our camera looking. So if we grab our follow camera, we can find, and we have an awesome little thing in the follow camera where it says we want to take our character and we want them rotating with the camera. So we can look for pawn control rotation. I think if we set this to true. I believe the character should be locked. No not okay well let's just get this in here so let's set our pawn to use the control rotation so that's true and we need this rotation to be using the yaw rotation since that's left and right pitch would be up and down and roll would be side to side so we need to get use controller yaw, rotation yaw. And what this is doing is this is taking a true statement, it's just passing that bool along. So if this was false, this would be setting it to false. That's what I like about these little extra additional nodes that are on the, the uh, they've added onto the edge of these sets and gets. And then one more thing we have to do is we need to actually manipulate the movement of where the character is facing. So what we can do is we need to orient our character to a direction. So if we drag off and we hit orient rotation to movement, we can set this and we'll leave it at false. Because right now the default for our character movement is set to true. <coughs> So we can go in, we can test it. I don't think any, so now our character is actually rotating with our camera. If we let go, our character is now stuck. So we got to set this to turn off as well. So real quick, we can just easily just grab these three nodes. We can copy these, go into our stop function, just paste it. Let's drag this in and we're going to set this to false and we'll set this to true. And now our characters should both 
now rotate with our camera and when we let go we should be able to rotate around them again so that's how we get our character snapped the direction we want them to look and snap and move their car camera a couple more things we're going to finish up real quick with wrapping and we're going to wrap this up with uh, some additional camera motions let's jump back to the event graph and let this be an overall feel for just both the uh, server and whoever the players are to be able to manipulate their cameras this doesn't need this is an information that needs to be passed along to the server the other information does because that the everybody has to see the character rotating within the game um, so first thing we'll do is we want to grab our camera field of view so let's grab our follow camera and we want to set its field of view to something more narrow when we're aiming so if we do set FOV strangest thing field of view will not show up so we actually have to type in the word by ELD and there's set field of view. So let's copy that, let's paste it. Our normal set field of view is 90. And let's narrow our down to about, I want to say 75. Not too much since we're not using anything as scopes or iron size. So yeah, we're just kind of getting the real generic basic setup. Let's drag it out so we can see it. Okay, so that is going to be our aiming of weapons so now what we can also do is we can set our character rotation to actually be on the actual side of the players so from here we can do the same thing we had done before we can go into our start or stop and we can copy this go back to our event graph and let's just drag it out just paste it and again let's bring these down copy this right below let's just flip these around connect these to the targets well we have a follow camera already so we don't need it twice so let's connect the rest of the main lines together to make sure this works I'm just going to delete this and I'll bring that up here. Well I know this one needs to be in there. The cool thing is if you double click on these lines that'll give you a reroute node and you can just drag that out from anywhere and it just it helps make your stuff look a lot more organized instead of a lot of lines crisscrossing each other and can be kind of confusing to read after a while. Neat little trick a buddy of mine Steven showed me so alright so now that I believe our camera's done let's comment this in so anybody that we hand this off to knows what we did so let's just select this and we're going to call this hold down C and let's comment this as aiming weapons. And the next part, this will be uh, orient character. <laughs> Can't even spell, my goodness. There we go. All right, if we compile and save it, now our character should now camera zooms in, he rotates, and he rotates around. So that seems like a good starting point for our uh, character right now. In the next part, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this guy to actually start looking a lot differently when he starts aiming the weapons around. So we'll stop the video there, and then when we come back, we'll get this guy. Uh, we're basically going to break this guy in half. So we'll see you then.